All right. Hello, everybody. Let me get my microphone set up here. Uh, welcome to the uh, monthly 3D printing and 3D design webinar. I am Nick Klosky, uh, one of the co-founders of Honeypoint 3D, and I welcome you to our uh, monthly webinar. Uh, as you may know, uh, we talk, we do this every month, and we talk about uh, 3D printing, 3D design, uh, really any questions that you all have. And um, and I already have a few that are uh, asked here on the webinar and on email, so I'll get to those. Uh, and then I'll kind of get to my own topics if you don't have any questions. Um, as always, uh, if you have questions, that is really, really important to me because I wanna make sure that uh, you get all of your questions answered. And for those of you that are watching this on replay later on, I wanna make sure that uh, you feel free to send me uh, questions in the meantime, and I will answer them in the next webinar. And you can always reach me at nick, N-I-C-K, at honeypoint3d.com. Uh, so just a little bit of housekeeping things first, uh, kind of tell you about what's been happening with Honeypoint. Um, as you know, we came out with our book, uh, which is uh, Getting Started with 3D Printing. Uh, that's published by Maker Media. Uh, it was published a couple of months ago. Uh, Maker Media is the uh, parent organization for uh, the people that put on the Maker Fairs and uh, make a uh, magazine and have a whole bunch of getting started books, getting started with drones, getting started with Arduino, getting started with 3D printing, which is ours. So um, look for that on Amazon or uh, Barnes and Noble or um, actually in kind of some interesting other places. We saw that uh, recently at the uh, MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in uh, San Francisco, which is kind of cool uh, to, to see that there. Uh, so that's our book. Um, the other big, thing that uh, happened was uh, just about a week ago, we launched our Fusion 360 course. So uh, that is on Autodesk Fusion 360, and I'll talk about that during the webinar uh, today. Fusion 360 is parametric modeling, so it's kind of the other side of the coin from Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is uh, a polygonal mesh uh, used to deal with, um, you know, models with uh, 100 faces, 100,000 faces, a million. Um, I've even had some models that are up to about 10 million uh, faces inside of it, and Mesh Mixer handles all of that. Conversely, Fusion 360 is about uh, models with as little faces as possible. Uh, kind of elegant, simple, but you can still create very, very uh, complex shapes uh, with those uh, kind of low number of faces. So. Uh, we came out with our class for that. Um, we are extending our um, sale uh, just until today. It's a uh, half off. Um, and actually, I'll be putting up um, a poll uh, or actually an offer uh, today uh, in a little bit that will discount the class a, a tiny bit more uh, for those of you that um, haven't pulled the trigger on that. But after today, we're going to be raising the price back up to uh, the normal price. So uh, normal price is $149, um, and we're going to be offering just in this webinar a 60% off coupon. So... Um, uh, with that said, uh, you know, I want to make sure that you all uh, that are watching are using uh, the question function. And sorry, I'm kind of getting over a little cold, so I'm a little bit sniffly, but uh, that's the good thing about webinars. I don't have to, uh, 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 you know, possibly infect you uh, over the Internet. So that's good. Um, but I want to make sure that um, you see that there is a question function in this webinar and as well as a chat, I will say. Hello there uh, in the chat. So you can use the chat to answer, uh, to ask questions uh, or uh, use the little question tab at the bottom to ask questions. Um, <clears throat> and again, I really wanna make sure that we answer your questions. So uh, we do have one that was suggested here in the webinar. So I will get to that uh, right now. This was a question asked by Fred. Uh, so thank you uh, so much for asking that question. So the question is, how does one identify the support structures to be printed by a second extruder on a machine so equipped? Uh, so this is a mesh mixer question and I will go and answer that now. So let me uh, bring up mesh mixer and then I will share my screen so that you uh, can see it. Let me do it on my second monitor, screen share. And I will share Mesh Mixer right here. 
like this. Great. Uh, so hopefully you can all see this mesh mixer screen. It looks like you can as I move this around. Uh, and if you can't, please uh, tell me in the chat and I will I will address it. So we uh, we have mesh mixer here. Let me just bring in my uh, bunny right here, which is uh, the Stanford bunny created at Stanford University. Analysis inspector. I'll just fix the bottom here to make it completely manifold. All right, great. Uh, so as you know, uh, if you click on analysis to overhangs, this is where the support structures are created. So right now our overhang settings uh, will create some overhang right here, some support structures right here. So that's uh, that's fine. You can usually you know change to one of these like Ultimaker or whatever, um, and then click generate support. So there you go, some support structures right here uh, are created. And remember, uh, and we go over this in the Mesh Mixer class, uh, you can uh, delete support structures if you hold down the control key on a PC or command on the Mac and click on them and delete any given one. I'm kind of zoom in here. Uh, so you can delete these. And if you click on them, you can also uh, create new support structures or if you drag down, um, if a support structure is green, um, it will usually create it if uh, the rules support it. So the rules are set up over here. Uh, drag it down like this. Um, or what you can do is you can always hold down the shift key and you can create support structures anywhere, even if it violates the rules. So I'm holding down the shift key. And if I think that I need support structures there, uh, it will create them. So that's kind of a, uh, um, a cool thing, uh, the, the shift button. Uh, but let me remove the support and just re-add them here. So we have our support right here. If we say done, um, we go out and we can kind of edit these support structures. But I go over this in the class. Uh, once you are happy with the support structures that you want, uh, you see this as a number one right here. It tells you do this one first. And then number two is convert to solid. So I'm going to say that. So here's the thing. Uh, that would uh, specifically answer Fred's question. If we say new object, we have an ob uh, uh, kind of a choice here to say new object or replace existing. So if we say new object, that is the one that we would want to do for a multi extruder uh, choice. So let's say new object, and it will go and make these support structures a separate object. So if we turn off the visibility, if we turn off the little eyeball here and click on the support, our supports are left. So these are all of the supports. They are just a full 3D model. So if I press W for wireframe, you see that it is just an STL. We could go sculpt this if we want. We could do any sort of commands on this that we could normally do, right? If we hit this with a uh, draw command, we could start you know, we wouldn't really want to do this because um, uh, it would kind of mess up the bunny, but I'm just telling you that it is a model. So we have two separate 3D models here. So we have a support and a bunny. So what we would do is uh, I would go and to the preferences, go to file to preferences here. Bring this up inside of here and go to the file tab. And we want to make sure, um, well, we have a couple different options. This is the way that I would normally do this, is I would say uh, file under export, say selection only. And this is the default. Um, we can export the whole scene, but that's not really the best way for doing a, a multi-part um, uh, 3D print. So we would say selection only. Make sure that that is selected. So now we have a bunny. We would go file to export. And we would just say bunny dot, you know, STL or OBJ or, or whatever you'd want to save it as. That's great. So now the bunny is exported. Now we click on the support right here. And now you see the support is active. It's the one highlighted. And we go file to export. And we would say bunny supports and save that out as an STL. So now I'm going to exit out of Mesh Mixer. 
and I'm not going to save it. So there we go. So now we're back here. Uh, let me bring up a slicer right here, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. And then let me screen share the slicer right here. Great. Uh, okay, so we have a, a slicer right here. I'm going to import uh, both of these. And they kind of came in as separate objects. Um, and uh, um, I might need to fix that um, in terms of where they import. Uh, but this is just kind of a, a rough thing. But this is, this is essentially how I would do this. Um, I, there is an import setting that says, um, th so what this is doing right here is it's uh, uh, arranging all of the different objects based on their bounding box. So you can see that right here is the bounding box between these two. Um, I would want to import these as, um, there's an import thing that says don't auto arrange, just import them where they are. And that's what I would want. Um, but just to give a, uh, let me see if I can move this bunny here. So obviously I would wanna change the import settings uh, to just import this as an entire uh, assembly right here. But you can kinda, kinda understand here what I'm getting at. So if this were all imported as two, I would have two different models here. So that is really how you would print this as two separate models. You would assign one process to print the bunny. Uh, you would assign another process to print the supports and the supports would be assigned to a second extruder um, with some sort of you know soluble support material or whatever. In uh, Simplified 3D, which is what this is, um, you would, uh, essentially add a new process um, and select a model and say the support the bunny gets printed with this one and select model the bunny supports is printed with this one and then um, you can ass assign different things so the uh, this was the supports I would assign a process you know to print with a specific temperature and and you know all of that with this one and then this one and then they would print together. Um, you're essentially with this process printing two completely separate 3D models, but they just happen to overlap in such an intelligent way that nothing fails. So let me exit out of that. So hopefully, uh, oh good, so Fred already said uh, um, that was a good answer. Um, what the thing is with uh, multi-material printing is that you just essentially print two separate 3D models uh, and the support structures can be saved out uh, in that way. Uh, if I bring up Mesh Mixer again right here and screen share a Mesh Mixer like that, um, that is what you can do with, um, there's a, a special feature in here. Let me fix this bunny again. <clears throat> like this. Um, that allows you to do things like um, draw kind of an area on this. So one of the uh, new uh, features of Mesh Mixer uh, is that it allows you to uh, create um, uh, areas for 3D printing specifically uh, for multiple materials. So let me create a face group right there. And uh, let me find this. One second here. So it's right under here, under et, uh, edit to generate complex. So this is specifically for multi-material printing. So I can go on this and I can double click, for example, on the edge right here and uh, just say, accept for this. And this has created let me, a complex object right here of that edge um, that allows me to do things to that by um, uh, splitting the complex out like this. Um, I can extrude that in. I can do all sorts of different things. So I would look in, let me 
turn this back on right here. So edit to generate complex. I can double click on the edge. I can also double click just right in the center. And that's usually a little bit more uh, used. And you can see that it's automatically extruded that inwards. Uh, we can say how much uh, we want that you know, extruded inward. We click accept. And now um, we can split out that complex like this. And you can assign this to be printed with a different material on the bunny that has that cut out. Um, and so you can get very kind of interesting shapes on the outside of that bunny when you use a different material. Uh, so that's all covered in the class as well. Um, and that is uh, specifically for multi-material printing. So you would print the body of this bunny with, um, you know, a fast process or, or, or something with, you know, very, very little infill. Um, and then the very edge of this here, the outside, you could print with a much more dense um, infill, uh, layer height, like whatever. This is just a separate object. You could go export this and 3D print that. So um, those are a couple of things that are, um, let me turn up my light here. <clears throat> a little bit more light on me there. Um, there's a couple of things that, that deal with uh, multi-extruder printing and that generate complex command. Uh, we added that into our class. It was um, uh, the new feature in uh, MeshMixer 3.0. So uh, be sure to check that out in the class. Let me see a comment here. Um, Okay, so we have a question from Christina. I always read the questions back uh, because the people on the replay may not be able to see the questions. Um, so I just wanna make sure everybody sees them. So Christina says, uh, hello, I'm making a model to make plaster molds. Uh, I'm interested in undercuts and parting line where separating two or three part molds. Is there a way Mesh Mixer can show me where undercuts will be and how to organize parts of rigid plaster molds? Um, so there would be a couple ways to do this. Um, let me see. There was actually, um, you can't see what I'm doing right now, but uh, let's see. Give me one second here. I want to, yep. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. share. Um, I think this will work. Hold on, let me say, let me just break that off over here. Okay, so let me share this screen with you now. Um, uh, so Christina, uh, th there are uh, not specific mold things inside of Mesh Mixer. Um, but you can kind of do it. So there's, there would be a few different ways. I'm showing you right now, this is the uh, um, Mesh Mixer uh, homepage. If you click here on forum right here, um, it takes you to the forum. If you click uh, right in the search here at the top and you type in mold, M-O-L-D, you'll get quite a few um, uh, discussions on mold making. Um, like this one, complex multi-part mold issue. Um, there's no answers for this yet because um, it was, well, it was asked in July, but there are a lot of um, discussions on mold making. So let me click on this one, number nine. Um, so uh, if you haven't known um, or seen this, uh, MagWeb right here um, is a really, really intelligent, well-versed person that helps everybody on the forums. Um, and so he... Um, is you know is helping this person with mold issues just even for this bunny about um, uh, parting lines all of this stuff so there's a lot a lot of discussions on uh, mold making with all of this you can see um, people doing uh, talking about mold making for um, can't really see much here but uh, for foot uh, you know for feet for molding feet um, you know so. I can't give you a very quick function, a, a quick description of that. Let me uh, get rid of that here and just go back. 
Oh, stop sharing. There we go. Um, I can't give you a very quick description of um, doing parting lines for molds, um, but they certainly are inside of those discussions there. Um, it's a part of, um, you know, seeing where the overhangs are. And let me kind of give you a, a, a kind of very quick thing in Mesh Mixer. Um, a lot of the discussions about molds, so let me bring up Mesh Mixer and share that again. I just bring in the bunny, for example. There is a, um, a way, so if you uh, click on select right here and just, uh, um, you know, select, you know, just something that you can see, you can go to modify to select visible. And what that will do is it will show you everything that is visible from the direction that you're looking. So if we rotate around, we can see that quite a bit of that, you know, you can't see, but you can. Um, if you were making a mold where this was facing downwards in the mold, this would be an issue right here because the mold would, you know, essentially attach here and not here. Um, and when it parts and does that, um, one of the good ways to kind of start to approach this is to press the space bar um, and make sure that uh, snapping is turned on so that when you go like this, you can see that the, the object will snap to certain kind of viewpoints and you can kind of work on your workflow. You see it kind of snapped right there. Um, and then, you know, even if I have something selected right now, if I go to modify select visible, it'll just change that selection. If you hold down shift and select visible, you're gonna be adding to that selection. But that's kind of like one starting way um, to go to, you know, a certain view and have it snap there like that, and then go to modify select visible to kind of see where a mold would go. Um, and, you know, obviously that's not gonna work. So you would want to start cutting off those overhangs right here for uh, parting lines. Um, that's a little bit of that answer, but I would certainly, let's go back here. Um, I would certainly look at the mesh mixer forum for other mold things. Um, now, one thing I did want to talk about um, in our remaining time is that uh, there are tools uh, that are being brought into Fusion 360 <coughs> that have Mesh Mixer uh, features in them. So let me start up Fusion, um, and then we'll talk about that a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, if you also didn't know, uh, within the last couple weeks, Fusion 360 has brought in a mesh workspace. Excuse me. And let me minimize Fusion here so I can see myself. Let me mute this so I don't cough. So within the last couple of weeks, um, Fusion has brought in a mesh workspace. So there's probably about uh, one twentieth of uh, mesh mixer that is now inside of Fusion. So a little bit um, and some good tools, but I would really, really encourage you to go look at um, our Fusion class. We have a little rundown on that, but also um, on the Fusion website, there are uh, links to uh, the kind of mesh preview. Um, and once you bring a mesh into Fusion, you can start to do things with it and maybe use Fusion to create um, molds with draft lines and things like that. Um, you know, you start to get to some weird things with uh, converting models into T-splines and all of that, um, but that's maybe the topic for a different thing. Uh, we also have uh, some information on that in our class as well on how to convert uh, models from uh, uh, three-sided polygons into four-sided polygons, which could then be brought into Fusion and actually converted into a Fusion object. And then once it's converted, you can start making molds with like draft lines and things like that, uh, or draft angles. But if you wanna stay within Mesh Mixer, then I would go to that forum over there and there's lots of questions for that. So hopefully, Christina, that helped answer your question. Um, if nobody else has any questions on the webinar, I want to get to uh, one question. It was kind of a simple question. Uh, it was by um, a person named John that just asked about uh, uh, a very simple kind of household project and how to go about modeling that. So uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, the question was, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, he has um, 
yeah, I can't, I can't really show it to you, but, uh, you know, uh, the kind of door I, and forgive me, I don't know door terminology, but you know, when you open a door, there's like a little tab, which goes into a slot, which locks the door. Right. So, um, that little slot kind of wore out the, the screws, uh, going into the wood wore out. And, uh, John wants to create a, um, a replacement plate with the holes in a different place where the wood has not rotted away. Right. So uh, pretty simple. And he just asked it how to go about even figuring out how to model that um, at all. So that is a mechanical object. So that would be uh, more in the fusion line than in the mesh mixer line. So I want to show you uh, very, very quickly how to go about doing that. Um, I kind of uh, did a very, very rough measurement. Um, so I want to show you right here. Let me get this. Uh, if you can kind of see that it looks actually mirrored um but you can kind of see it um it was just a very very quick drawing i did of um it look like that um of what that door there we go um of what that door latch thing uh should look like it's properly here a bit more down Perfect. Uh, so that's what we're going to model right now. Um, and this is a lot about, um, you know, how to plan design and how to, uh, you know, really just understand how to approach a project, right? And this is a very simple project. So let me share a screen here. A screen share. So for some reason, uh, Fusion is not being listed here. So let me share my screen and bring up Fusion. So hopefully uh, you should be able to see this. Uh, so we had a blank Fusion screen. So something like this is probably best done with a sketch, right? So this is going to be a kind of a rectangular plate. Now, some people might think, uh, oh, you would want to start with a box. Now, the, the reason I don't like this is because you can't start from the center right here. Whenever you draw a box, you have to draw it from one corner to another. And so that would certainly work, but um, you, you would have to create a box like this and then recenter it on the origin, super pain. So I'm going to start with a sketch. I'm going to start with a sketch on the top plane right here. And if we look at my little piece of paper, I'm going to start with the plate that it's on. I'm going to go to a rectangle and say center rectangle. I'm going to kind of click on this, the origin right here. And you see I can drag a box. Um, the bottom one down there is highlighted in blue. I'm going to type 40, press tab, and that locks 40 in. And now I'm going to type 60. That's the overall size of the whole thing zoom in here. I don't really like these, these cross things. They're automatically created, so I can click on those and delete those. But you see we have 40 right here and 60 right here. We can drag these wherever we want. So I'm going to start with um, my central lit little space right here, um, which is where that um, kind of door plunger goes in. So I'm going to go back up to another center rectangle from the center. And that one was uh, 20, oops, 20 by 27. I can get rid of those little cross things too. If I, sometimes you might want them. So, but now we see 20 by 27. That's great. Um, but now we have a couple of holes that we're putting in the center where the screws go. So here's kind of some cool things. I'm going to create a circle. Um, I'm going to kind of hover my mouse over this so it locks to that center line. And I'm just going to draw a circle in an arbitrary place that is three millimeters, like that. I'm going to do another one um, down here that is also three millimeters. But see, that is not where a hole would normally go, right? It would be a hole somewhere around here, somewhere around here. <coughs> So here's a really cool thing. You don't need to, to draw them in the right place right when you start off. If you go here to sketch, to dimension, <coughs> uh, also the hotkey D, 
what you can do is you can see that my mouse has a little dimensioning line on it. I'm going to click on the center of this one and the center of this one. And now it says a dimension line. So right now, those are 25 millimeters across. I don't want that. My measurements say they should be 45. So I'm going to say 45, press enter. So now they're 45. That's awesome. But they're not centered on this. So they certainly are 45 away from each other, but they're not the correct dimension from the center. Totally fine. So you see my mouse is still in dimensioning mode. I can click on the center and one side of this to bring out another dimension line. So this is 45. I'm going to assume that we have half above this and half below it. So I don't have to do the, the 45 divided by two um, measurement in my mind. I can just say 45 slash two, which is a, you know, uh, saying 45 divided by two and press enter. And it happens to be 22.5. So you see these are dimensioned at 45. That's totally right. And I'm totally fine to create a dimension here. This distance from here to here does not conflict with this di uh, distance from here to here. So now this is 22.5 here, which is really just this. <coughs> so if we wanted to get really fancy, here's another thing. Here's actually a really cool thing. If I hover over this 45, I see that it says D7 right in front of that 45. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I can actually do is double click on this and I can say D7 divided by two. So what that did is it still gave me 22.5, but it's based on this. If I changed this to 50, this would now read whatever this is divided by two and it would be 25. So this is actually pretty awesome. Um, I can change this back to 45 and that will update. So that's really cool. Um, so here's now another thing. Um, this needs to be 15 millimeters from the edge. That was another measurement. So if I go and try to do the same thing of a sketch dimension and I say from here to this line, I want that to be 15. Great. It kind of moves everything off. But that's not actually a problem. What I can do is I'm still in dimensioning. Um, if I hover my mouse over this, I see this is a D9 in front of this. Great. So I can just click on this to here is D9. I can move this up if I want to to see it a little bit better. And so this 22.5 um, is still active, but the other uh, constraints still make it proper, right? So um, this is essentially my plate. I'm going to click stop sketch right here and move it. And I'm going to just right click on this area and extrude it by two millimeters. And there is part of my plate. So let me stop sharing for a second. Um, Make sure nobody has any questions. So um, that was um, kind of a really cool way to, to see how to use dimensioning um, to do a design. You know, uh, it's great. Like, like the things, uh, the 45 uh, uh, millimeters away, that was something that has to be set <coughs> because I wrote it on my piece of paper as 45. But that thing where I, I put the whole halfway that is something I didn't write. So I should be able to reference other numbers in my design. Um, if I wrote it down, that is um, a pretty set dimension. I should just type that in. But other things like, you know, moving it halfway away, um, I don't want it to be 22.5 away. I want it to be half the distance so that the hole is halfway up and halfway down. So when I say I just want it to be halfway, that should tell me that I shouldn't actually put a number in there. I should just make a reference to it being halfway, which was that like D7 divided by two. That's kind of a shortcut for that. So the last thing I want to uh, very quickly show is how to make uh, the edge of this. As you know, um, 
when a uh, kind of a door plunger goes in, um, it doesn't go straight. There's like a little curve to it so that the door plunger kind of slides in and then goes like this. So uh, let me go and screen share right here and then go back to Fusion. So here's kind of a, um, a cool little thing um, to do the, the edge. So we're going to, we need like a little curved part on this edge. So I'm gonna say up here to sketch, uh, right here, create sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch right on the edge here. So if you see, we're, we're creating a sketch right on the edge of this. I'm gonna zoom in because I just want this edge. Um, I know that this is about five millimeters is what I want. So I'm gonna say arc, a three point arc. I'm gonna start here and I, I want this to be about five millimeters long. So I am gonna type five and then press tab. So now this is locked to be about five millimeters long. Um, and I'm gonna create, I'm gonna maybe go right around here, right on this line. You can see it's kind of locking to that. Um, this looks maybe right, that's maybe too much of a curve, maybe just right here. And now I'm just gonna draw whatever curve I want, right? Because I'm gonna do something with it later. Press escape. So that's five millimeters, but this is obviously not a curve that I want. Um, so what I can do is I'm gonna go here to the right-hand side, I'm gonna bring my sketch palette out and click tangent. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna say, I want this and this to be tangent. So now you see that there's a tangency kind of a constraint right there. I'm gonna press escape. So now if I click on this point right here and try to move it, I can move it a little bit, um, but not really all that much. Um, this is a tangency at five. You can kind of see that I'm moving this and it's doing a little bit, not a whole lot. But let me kind of zoom out here. Um, I might have to change the tangency quite a bit, but now when you see I move out, the center of this is moving and um, we're keeping the tangency. So you see that this is still tangent here, but as I move this out, <coughs> it's affecting the curve of that. And this is all because of constraints. This is staying at five millimeters and our tangency is being locked in so it's just changing the curve. So I'm gonna go for a nice kind of curve that I want like that and click okay. Great. So a nice way to kind of match this curve is I'm gonna to go to sketch to offset and I'm gonna offset this one down. And I'm just gonna offset it, you know, somewhere right around here, which just gets me a curve. Now I have all these constraints that are created. Um, of this, I'm gonna click on this number, delete it. I'm gonna click on the offset and delete it, which essentially just makes this um, its own little line. I'm gonna click on coincident, which means I want this point and this point to be the same. So now it moves to be coincident. And remember, this is still tangent because this one was tangent. Now I'm just gonna click on a line, 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 and that is now its own sketch profile. So I'm gonna exit out of this sketch. And we're gonna see that we have this little tab popping out. I'm gonna click on this and then right click and say extrude. And if we drag it backwards, we can see we're creating this edge. Now a cool thing is we're gonna say extends here, not to distance, but just say two. <coughs> and when we say two, we can just say two this edge and we click, boom, and the operation is join. So now we have like a little thing. And this is maybe enough, maybe not. Um, we can do things uh, to kind of finish this off by uh, clicking on fillet and maybe uh, clicking on a fillet on that edge and a fillet on this edge. Kind of zoom in a little bit here. Um, and filleting those, right, to make them a little bit more round and nice. Uh, like that. And I think that this is a pretty good uh, thing to try. Actually not. Uh, the last thing I would do is make a fillet on these holes because a screw is going to go into them. 
um, a, a, probably a countersunk screw. So um, actually not a fillet for that. We would create a, uh, go to modify to chamfer. Click on that one and that one. And then chamfer that. Like that, so that a screw could go in. You know, I'm sure that there's a very accurate number for the screw that I would be using, but you know, that looks uh, pretty good there to allow a screw to go in. And then I am pretty much set. I would save this as a door plate, like that. And then if I wanted to 3D print this, I would click on this little down arrow on the body, right click and say save as STL and save it out. And then we would be done, right? So that would uh, that would kind of model that little door plate and then I could go test it out and see if that worked. And um, well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, uh, on my little drawing, I said, which is reversed, I should figure out how to fix that. Um, but I said 45, right, for the dimensions of those holes, but those holes go into rotted wood. Right, so I would need to uh, move out those holes a little bit wider, and maybe even make the plate a little bit uh, taller, uh, so that those screws could could uh, screw into wood that isn't rotted, isn't uh, that's good. So this kind of shows you how to go around planning things uh, using dimensioning um, and um, kind of adding some more architectural shapes to uh, to a kind of simple design. Just looking here, seeing if there's any other questions. Um, oh, actually, uh, I did say I would put an offer up. Um, uh, I have no idea what this will look like um, to you, but hopefully uh, you can see somewhere on uh, the webcast. Uh, this is kind of a new webcast platform for me, so I apologize. But hopefully you can see um, a little link at the bottom. Uh, right now, that is a 60% off coupon for our Mesh Mixer class. Um, we are uh, we've been selling it at 50% off uh, for the last few days, so it only gives you another uh, $5 or so off. But you know, anything anything is good. So um, if you click on that right now, uh, hopefully you can see it. Um, you get a, a slightly better discount than what we've been offering. And today is the last day for our 50% off. So we're uh, uh, putting the car, the course back up to uh, 149 uh, for uh, a while. Um, one other thing I also wanted to ask is um, we are offering an affiliate program uh, to sell our classes where if you sell a class uh, using a special link that we would set up for you, you would actually get paid money when you when other people sign up for the class. So um, we're not letting everybody, um, uh, we're not letting just like anybody sign up as an affiliate because we want to make sure that we don't like flood um, multiple of the same channels with it. But if you think that you um, would do well selling our classes, we would really uh, welcome you to do that. You could earn some money yourself um, and help spread out um, this learning about 3D printing and 3D design to other people. So um, if you're interested in that, then um, let us know and get in contact with us. Uh, you can always email me, nick at honeypoint3d.com. Um, and um, I really hope that that uh, came up. Oh, awesome, and people actually answered the poll. So uh, uh, I haven't used a poll before. Um, so most people um, on the webinar are using Mesh Mixer, which is really awesome. Um, uh, and I'm re very happy to see Mesh Mixer start to go in more and more into uh, Fusion. Um, oh, yeah, since most of you are using Mesh Mixer, let me just very quickly show you how to see the um, uh, Mesh Mixer features inside of Fusion. So uh, let me, uh, you won't be able to see this, but I'm just kind of um, bringing in, uh, let me export out this bunny as an STL uh, from Mesh Mixer. And now let me start Fusion. So I wanna show you, oh, Fusion has already started. Yes, uh, all right. I don't need to start it again here. And let me share my screen. Certainly wanna, there we go. Okay, so um, yeah, so there's a few different ways uh, to get to the mesh inside of Fusion. Let me just get rid of this uh, uh, thing. So uh, th there was a couple different ways uh, to do this. Right now, um, if you go under model, um, you know, this, this left hand, 
kind of fly out here, model patch render. Uh, there's no mesh inside of this. Um, if you go down to the lower right, to the little gear down there, and you say, do not capture design history, which means that you are turning off um, your history, your parametricness at the bottom. You say, continue. Now, when you open this up, you will have a mesh workspace right here. So if you click on mesh, it gives you some options right here. And it says create right here. You don't really create a mesh, you insert a mesh. So you click on this, um, you double click on a mesh and you have brought it in. Um, there's a cool thing that says center, right? So if you click on this, it will move your mesh to um, the center of your drawing. So if your object was off the center, it'll move it in. Um, but kind of looks a lot like Mesh Mixer because it really is Mesh Mixer. Um, you have some create, so you can turn um, uh, a B rep into a mesh because you're in the mesh workspace. Um, modify it, right? So you can remesh, right? So if you paint on this, you see it's very much like Mesh Mixer. Meshing type, uh, adaptive. You can turn up the density and click on preview. And you see that it's up density, or you can remesh it down to very low density. Preserve sharp edges, preserve boundaries. So those are there, remesh, reduce, make closed mesh um, is essentially uh, the make solid command. So if we do make closed mesh, that would be uh, mesh body uh, selected, rebuild standard, preserve sharp edges. Let's do that and preview. Um, this is the make solid command. Uh, so for something with this huge hole right here, um, it actually did very well. So we click OK. Fusion thinks about it for a second and then filled in the bottom and remeshed the rest of the bunny as well. So make solid is this, or make closed is the same as make solid. So erase and fill. Um, I can just go here and press the, um, I should be able to press the delete key. And you see I've uh, cut a hole in the mesh. So very similar thing, smoothing is smoothing. So this is like the smooth brush. You can go like this, do some more smoothing and you just see the kind of jagged edges of this being smoothed down. Um, and I wanna really, really make sure um, that, we, that I show you one other cool thing with this. Uh, let me kind of exit out of this. Okay. Um, so we can go into sculpt, model, you know, things like this. Um, if we go into model, um, so I'm, I, this is in, um, parametric mode or not. But so we have this mesh body here. If we go into model right here, we have a new thing under sketch, which shows mesh right here. And we say create mesh section. And it says mesh body. We only have this one. I'll click on this. But now look at this. We're able to drag this throughout and it's creating a section and I'll show you, I'll, I'll just kind of do two of these. I'll go like this, click OK. And now it's created a section. Let me do another one, create mesh section. And I'll just go right here and say OK. So now look, we have two sketches. Let me turn off the, the mesh bodies like this. Look at this, we have two sections for this. Now, if we go to sketch and we say mesh fit curves to mesh section, <clears throat> we can click on this curve. Um, I'm gonna say that this is a closed spline. <coughs> and I'm gonna click on this and then boom, it turns it into a closed profile. I'm gonna click okay. If we do this again, fit curves to mesh section, and on this one, oh, actually cancel that. So then I'm gonna stop this sketch. So that created a sketch right here. If I do it again, sketch, mesh, fit curves to mesh section, and I click on this, 
and then kind of zoom in here and then say again, this is a closed spline, click OK, stop sketch. We now have these two sketches. We can do a create loft from this one to this one. Um, oh, and it's not visible because I didn't, I had to turn on the bodies and turn off the, the meshes uh, and say, okay. So now I've lofted those two things, those two sketch profiles together. This is a loft, right? I can go in and edit this sketch and this will change. But if we bring the bunny back in, you can see that that has matched the shape of that part of the bunny pretty darn, darn well. Turn off the bunny, turn off the sketch. You see that it's matched it pretty darn well. So this is a really, really awesome way to start creating um, parametric bodies from mesh bodies. Um, so um, we have a... Uh, we have a uh, a section in our class that talks about that, and this is brand brand new um, to um, uh, to uh, Fusion three hundred and sixty. So this is kind of changing over time, um, but that's a really kind of awesome thing that'll start right now, uh, really improving a workflow for turning meshes into parametric. Um, and uh, I see Keith that says, uh, figures, he just bought it for 50% off. Uh, that's your luck. Uh, well, that is not your luck. So um, I will uh, work out a way of refunding you that extra 10%. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, people uh, are happy with our classes and happy with our pricing. So uh, I will connect with you, Keith, uh, afterwards to uh, uh, make sure that you get that uh, few dollars, 10% back. Uh, um, you know, we want people to be happy. So um, with that said, um, you know, send me questions to ask um, uh, any other questions uh, for our next thing. We also want to answer questions uh, during the meantime. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for showing up. And uh, happy mesh mixing, happy fusioning. And uh, we would really appreciate it if you get the word out about our classes by tweeting about it uh, or whatever. We just want more people to join in this 3D printing uh, economy and world. So uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Uh, this is Nick uh, signing out. Thanks.